Hi everyone and welcome to another video. As you might have seen, I once again have a nice Apple Mac Mini here with me. This time it's a late 2014 model. In this video I plan to replace the slow 2.5 inch hard drive with a much faster SSD. After that we will also install the latest macOS version, Sonoma, on here and see how the SSD upgrade helped boost the performance. This small hardware and software upgrade will turn this slow outdated machine into something more than usable today. I did a similar video earlier for the same, but with a Mac Mini late 2012, where I also upgraded the machine with an SSD and then installed Ventura. The process to upgrade the hard drive on this model is different and requires a bit more work as the drive is buried deep in the chassis here. Also for this model, unfortunately, it's no longer possible to upgrade the memory as it is now soldered on the motherboard. As you might have noticed, it's really hard to differentiate between the different models at first glance. Even the newest model, equipped with an M2 and released in 2003, shares that same design which Mac Minis had since 2011. And honestly, that's fine, because I really like how they look. Between the 2012 model, which I covered earlier, and this 2014 model we have here, the only thing that's externally different is the second Thunderbolt port instead of Firewire, which still existed on the 2012 and 2011 models. On this page we can also see that the latest officially supported operating system by Apple is macOS Monterey, so we will need to work around that limitation if we want to install the latest version Sonoma. Let's get started and first take a look at what we will need for all of this. Obviously we need a SATA SSD that will replace the current hard drive. I chose for a 250GB Samsung 850 EVO, but larger drives are definitely supported as well, and also even basic and cheap SSDs will get close to the limitation of SATA anyway, so no need to worry a lot about that in terms of performance. Further, we'll also need some tools that are unfortunately less standard. We need a plastic spudger, a TR6 Torx bit, which is a special version of Torx. TR stands for tamper resistant. This is basically like a regular Torx, but which requires a hollow center. In size T6, these might not be very easy to find, unfortunately. We will also need a regular TX Torx, two small screwdrivers, which we will use to pull out the motherboard, or we can get a special tool specifically for this, but these two will do just fine. A set of tweezers is optional, but might come in handy too, as we sometimes will have to deal with small connectors. And finally, you will also need a USB drive of 32GB or bigger, in order to install macOS on that empty SSD after we've replaced it. Before you dive in and start opening the Mac Mini right away, keep in mind that we first need to create a Sonoma installer on that USB drive. I did a very detailed video on that already, for which you can find the link in the description. When I started all of this, this Mac Mini was still running on macOS High Sierra. I guess the previous owner never really bothered upgrading this to something newer. You can also see in about this Mac that it is equipped with a 2.6GHz Core i5 and has 8GB of RAM which, unfortunately, as I mentioned, is non-upgradable. In system report, we can see that the model identifier is Mac Mini 7.1 and in the SATA section here we can get a look at a current installed 1TB hard disk. Let's test briefly how performance is before upgrading as well. Let me just launch Safari here and see how long that takes. Not very fast to my ID, but better to get some exact numbers on this performance instead with AGA system test. Only by looking at the time it takes to launch the tool, it's clear that we won't see anything impressive here. And that gets painfully confirmed by the test. I knew already that the results would not be great, but only 43 megabytes per second write and slightly higher read speeds, that is just plain slow. Even in 2014, that was terrible performance. We got our starting point, so let's prepare the USB drive. I will just fast forward through these steps. As mentioned, you can find a more detailed explanation of these steps on my blog and on that detailed video which I did earlier. Now 
All right, our USB drive is ready and now we are fully prepared to dive in the SSD upgrade. After shutting down the machine, we need to turn it around to access the plastic cover on the bottom. That cover is fixed on three points, one towards the back and two on the side. With a spudger, we can easily lift that cover up and then remove it. And here is where we need that special TR6 Torx bit right away, as these six screws on the bottom all have that special type of Torx head. Once we got all of these out, we will need to be careful to not straight away remove that metal plate, as the Wi Fi antenna, that black plastic round, is connected with a wire to a connector on the Wi Fi card bottom right here. So lift the metal plate up from the left side and then first remove the screw that holds the antenna connector on the Wi Fi card over here, a regular T6 this time. And then after disconnecting the connector, you can remove the antenna cable and separate the metal plate from the rest of the Mac Mini. Next part that needs to go out is the fan. This one is fixed with another three T6 screws. As with that metal cover, don't instantly pull it out, as it also has a small connector to the motherboard. This time we need to move it from the back to the front instead, and then once we get access to the connector, we can just pull it up to disconnect. Here we also have the SATA cable that connects to the drive. It's secured with another T6 screw. So we need to remove that one and then simply lift up the connector to disconnect it. Here we have another connector, which is for the IR sensor, I believe. This needs to be disconnected as well. And if your Mac Mini would have a fusion drive, there will be a third connector over here to a small PCIe drive. That connector can also be used to install a regular NVMe drive if desired, but you would require a special adapter. And although you can easily find such online and they don't cost that much, a 2.5 inch SATA drive is sufficient, seeing the rest of the hardware specifications that we have. Let's continue now by removing the last screw that holds the motherboard in place over here. Once that one is out, we can use the two small screwdrivers to insert over here. There is no need to push them down completely, just gently pull them together to the back of the Mac and the board should slide out. Before we can get the board fully out, we will also need to disconnect the power supply. And then we can finally slide the board out completely. That looks pretty cool if you ask me, a nice piece of engineering we got here. Next step is to remove that power supply. For that we first need to loosen the power connector. There is a small metal clip that holds it in place and once that got removed, you can turn the connector 90 degrees to the left to loosen it. Another T6 is securing the power supply to the case, so that one needs to come out as well. That should be sufficient to get the power supply out, but it can take a bit of wiggling and pushing here and there, as it's a tight fit. There we go, that's the power supply of the Mac Mini. We're getting close now. We need to get one more screw out, which is keeping the drive cage in place. And after removing that one, the drive cage can come out and we finally get to see the hard drive which we will replace.
The drive is fixed to that plastic cage with 48 screws this time. Once the drive is loose, navigate the small SATA connector to the plastic drive cage and then carefully remove the connector from the drive. There is a sticker that keeps this extra secured, which you will need to remove as well. And here we have it, our 1TB mechanical drive. Looks nice, but unfortunately it's terribly slow as we could see in the benchmark. Time to replace it with this Samsung SSD, as I mentioned in the beginning. So now the process starts in reverse. First I'll connect that custom SATA cable. And why not put that sticker back as well. Then we need to guide the connector through the hole in the drive cage. Position the drive properly and put the 48 screws back in place. Once the drive is properly installed, we can put everything back in the empty case. And put back that T6 that fixes it. Now the power supply needs to go back in, and exactly as when we got it out, it can take a bit of effort to get it back to exactly where it belongs. Just be patient and careful. Once things are where they should, you can also fix the power supply again. Then we need to put back the power connector back in place by turning it 90 degrees to the right this time. If it looks more or less in place, we can put the metal clip back here too. The motherboard goes in the same way as it came out, by sliding it in. We need to make sure that we reconnect the power supply properly to the board as well, and this also isn't always very easy from the first time. Once we got the motherboard back in place, we can reconnect the two or three connectors here. First the IR sensor, then the SATA cable that connects our upgraded drive. That one had an extra screw to make sure it stays in place. And another one gets to fix the motherboard in the case. We can now put back the cooling fan. First reconnect it to the small connector here. The easiest is to line up the pins and then just push it down. And another three T6 screws need to be put back to keep the fan in place. We're almost there, and the last thing that we need to put back is the Wi-Fi antenna. First guide the cable along the case as where it was originally. Then reconnect the tiny antenna connector to the Wi-Fi card. And, once in place, secure it with that screw and washer. That's it. We can now close up the case with the metal plate and put back the last six special TR6 screws to where they came from. And as a finishing touch, just push back the black plastic cover where it was.
things got connected again and with the USB drive in, let's power up the Mac and see if we didn't break anything and connected things back properly. We can hear the chime, that's already a good sign. And as our SSD is empty, the Mac will automatically try to boot from the USB drive and if all goes well, we should end up in open core. Here we can see a single entry, install macOS Sonoma. We can press enter here or just wait for the timeout. Right now, macOS recovery for installation of Sonoma is being loaded from the USB drive. There we go. Before we can install macOS, we better first prepare that new SSD. So let's begin with Disk Utility. In Disk Utility, go to View and click Show All Devices. On the left, we can see now that the SSD got properly detected. Nice. So let's select it. Then in the top menu, choose Erase. Give a name to the drive. Choose APFS as format and GUID as scheme and click Erase. That's it. We can now exit Disk Utility and continue with the installation of Sonoma. Just click yourself through here and eventually select the name you gave to the SSD in Disk Utility and continue. After a lot of waiting and a few reboots later, we end up with this setup dialog. After answering the questions we get here, we finally end up in macOS Sonoma, installed on our SSD and running on this unsupported Mac Mini. The only thing that is left to do is to install Open Core to the SSD now. So far, we are still booting Open Core from the USB drive. As you can see, Open Core will automatically ask if you want to do this. So let's just continue here. After Open Core is built, choose Install to Disk and this time select the SSD instead of the USB drive which we did when we were creating that. That's it, we're all done here and can now remove the USB drive and do a first complete boot with only the SSD. Looking good. In about this Mac, we can see the capacity of the new SSD and in System Profiler, we can get some more details as we did earlier for that one terabyte drive. Let me now launch Safari and see if this is faster than before the upgrade. Looks like a proper improvement if you ask me. To get concrete numbers, we can again use AGA system test and repeat that same disk benchmark after the upgrade. Starting the tool is clearly faster than before. And the results definitely are too. That's more than 10 times as fast as before. For completeness, let me also quickly do the CPU benchmark in Geekbench 5. Well, those are less impressive numbers and I actually expected them to be a bit higher. But compared to that 2012 model, there is an improvement, so it looks like both of these Mac Minis aren't really fast. Let's repeat the same test with Geekbench 6. Similar result here. It looks like although this Mac Mini has a 4th generation Core i5, its performance is more in line with the low-end i3, unfortunately. That was it for the video. Hopefully, this could help you to upgrade your Mac Mini late 2014 as well. The SSD upgrade did give this nice little machine a nice boost in performance, and with the possibility to install Sonoma using OpenCore Legacy Patcher, we can get it to stay relevant in 2023. Unfortunately, as we could see in the benchmark results, the CPU power is a bit on the low side. Hence why a regular 2.5-inch SATA SSD is just a good match. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have liked this video and would appreciate a thumbs up if that's the case. If you would have any questions, let me know about them in the comments and I will try to give you an answer. And if you're into this kind of content, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again and hope to see you back here soon.